it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and I am back with a haul video for you. <laughs> All right, so there is so much to get through, so I'm gonna try to not talk a lot for each item itself, but I wanna give a little bit of a backstory of what happened. I went to an estate sale just down the street here in town and me and Barb went. We showed up about 30 minutes early and you know, you never know. Sometimes they let you in early and sometimes you have to wait right up until they open. So there was only about four people in line, including us, the whole time. So and mind you, it's it's not very warm outside still. So um, we waited in line and they did end up letting us in about 10 minutes early. So that was great. And before I get on too much, um, there are some things in the background that are part of the haul. These pictures here. And I've got a couple questions in the comments about what that thing is over there. That's a, that's a, it's an oven. It's an oven in the fireplace and the kitchen's right there. So it's all kind of together. It makes sense if you're in the space, sort of a unique thing to do, I guess. Uh, the house was built in 1963, I believe, 62, 63, 64, one of those years. Um, so I've got a lot to get through. I spent a total of $45 and I will also say nothing was priced. Everything was make an offer. <laughs> so I know a couple people there, they were not happy with that. And I was like, I don't care, you know, um, I'll make you an offer of what it's worth. So, but there were a couple of people that, that were like, yeah, I'm going to leave because I don't like making, they, some people don't like making offers. They don't know what it should be. They're like, oh, I don't want to lowball them and I don't want to pay double the price. I mean, so that's where it helps to know what things are worth and what the kind of going rate is for that environment. So for an estate sale, there's a certain price. For a yard sale, there's a certain price. For an auction, there's a certain price. For a antique mall, there's a certain price. So wherever you are, happen to be shopping, happen to be shopping, there are different price thresholds and what to expect for each of these items. So it's sort of kind of weird. You have to know what the fair market value is for each place that you're in. Uh, mind you, like I would not be this, I paid $5 for this. I wouldn't pay $5 for this at an antique store. This is worth about 35. And I've already been talking too much. All right, so there was a lot of fishing stuff. I'll get on with the fishing stuff since it's kind of whatever. This is like a bank, it's made of wood and you can put your coins right there in that area and fill that up. And it's sort of a see-through bank. Pretty cool, it'll go in the booth. Um, Actually, it's made here locally. It's stamped on the bottom, uh, a place in St. Jacob, Illinois. So somebody made this and that's pretty cool. That'll go in the booth and price point on that, under $10. Not sure yet, probably about $9.99 or $8.99, somewhere, something like that. This here is a really cool canoe shelf. Thought that was neat. Again, I pick up this kind of stuff for the fact that my booth is in an area where there is a large lake. So a lot of people come through, they like the whole lighthouse stuff and all this boating things. Um, it's not old, that's not really the point. It's just kind of the stuff that I know is gonna sell. So this is gonna sell for probably about $12. So there's that. What other boat stuff? Oh, okay, we got this, it says gone fishing. So it's a sign. Uh, reminds me of like Jen the Pudgy Picker. She picks up stuff kind of like this. So yeah, it's one of these things you could buy it like, uh, Gordman or Gordman's is that a thing? I don't know. Grandpa's or old time pottery stuff like that. So gone fishing, just a silly little thing. It'll probably sell for about eight, ten bucks, like that. Um, any more fishing stuff? Well, no, but this is kind of cool. It has this deer. I love that. Someone used some uh, a scroll saw or whatever you'd use to cut these deer in the side panel, and it's on both sides really cool I love that so this is gonna probably sell in the booth I paid two dollars for this by the way this will probably sell in the booth for I don't know upwards of twenty dollars I think because someone had to go to all the trouble of cutting that out and that might be high or low compared to what your area would bring so I just I just think that that's a fair price for our area kind of off off the beaten path a little bit I also got this. This is kind of like a, uh, what would you call that? Military, army. You know, I might be making that up. It just looks like that. It's this military green uh, toolbox. I didn't look at it. I don't think there's anything. 
Yeah. Oh, this is actually, it kind of reminds me of the tackle box. I wonder if that's what it is. So, okay, a tackle box then. I don't know. But either way, it says upholstery tools on top of it. Thought that was kind of cool. I'll sell it as is, stickers and all, <laughs> in the booth for maybe $12 or so. Okay. I also bought this rolling pin. I paid a dollar for it. I figured that was a decent price. Mind you, I'm, I'm just saying dollar to the lady and she's like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, a dollar. Uh, at auction, I would probably pay the same price. So uh, something like this would sell for about $8 in the booth. It's all wood. So that's kind of cool. I also bought one of these weather station things, which I never can figure out how to use them. If anybody happens to know how to use these, um, actually there's, never mind. Hang up in an airy place. If weather is dry, turn the chimney till the lady just comes out. If it is wet, bring out the man. Only adjust once. All right, so you adjust it once whenever you know what the conditions are. And then from then on, you can kind of know what it is by looking at it, depending on the lady or the man. Uh, but you just, I guess, have to remember what they each signify. There it is. It's really cute. I paid a dollar for this. I was kind of... Yeah, this is the kind of thing I'm like, I don't know what to charge for something like this. Uh, but I have sold one of these. It took a while to sell, but this one's in pretty good shape. So I think I'm going to put about $12 on it in the booth. I think that's fair. I th believe it'll sell for that. This is like one of those German things. Well, it says that. Made in Western Germany on the back of it. And our area over here is full of German heritage. So um, I think it'll do really well. It's one of those cool uh, things. This right here is in the way, so I guess I'll talk about it. It's this 1970s kitchen scale, very cool. It actually came in the original box, but I pulled it out of it so, you, so that you could see it. But it's really neat, and it, um, oh, it says kilograms. Oh, no, and pounds, okay. So really cool, and it's in great, great retro shape. This will go in the 1950s theme booth, which I'll say again, that it's not only 1950s things in that booth, it's just the style of the booth is 50s. So pretend you, built the kitchen in 1950 and then you never moved out. Well, say you moved out in the 80s. So you got things in there from 50s, 60s, 70s, and 40s, 30s, some little trinkety things, but the kitchen itself is designed to look like they built it in the 50s. All right. I did get some cars, some die cast cars. Happy to do that. So I am having trouble remembering how I did this. I think I, I think I picked this one up first. And I walked up and I said, um, three dollars. And she didn't say anything. I was like, four? And she's like, okay, four. So this is a 1957 Chevy Corvette. Yeah, I got it right. 1957 Chevy Corvette. It's very cool. The plastic does come off so you can see it better. There we are. Really cool. Great piece for four dollars. So this will go in the booth. Uh, this kind of stuff, these cars that I'm about to show you, you can sell them online. I just think it's a little bit more hassle. And I believe that there is a stronger market over here locally for this kind of stuff. So I, I, I had cars in the booth and they've been selling very easily. So this one will also go in the booth. The price point on it, I, I'd want to say somewhere around $20 just because I have this. I think it's a really great car. It's a Corvette. So that really adds to it. Really cool. I like that a lot. So about 20 bucks on that one. I think the second set of cars that I brought up to see about were these. And I brought them up together. And I, I want to say maybe I said two, somewhere between two and four dollars. Probably four for the pair. So this one here is a Stingray. And uh, it's very cool. It's a 1988, I believe. It's a Corvette Stingray 1988. Very awesome. I like that a lot. Uh, the hood opens, the doors open. Again, this one will probably go maybe 15 to 20, somewhere in there. Really cool car. And then this one here, what is it? This is just a Ford Thunderbird 66. Really cool. There it is. So that one also. Now this one in the booth, I'll probably put maybe $4 on, 4 or $5, something like that. Now the one that I got that I paid the most for, it's probably the car that isn't really, I mean, it's an Edsel. So I just, I, I've always liked the body styles of these cars, but they were never known for being 
great cars necessarily, uh, not like a Corvette, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a 1958 Edsel Citation. So um, yeah, really cool. It's black and it comes in the box and everything. This online, it, it doesn't go for very much, maybe $15, $20 on a good day. In the booth, I think it's gonna sell. And I would probably put about $22 to $24 on it. Um, I think that'll be pretty good. And I think it'll sell fairly easily in the booth. All right, so that's enough of the cars and let's call it, that's enough of the man stuff. Man stuff, this is awesome though. I told you a little bit about it in the opening. Awesome gumball machine. It's made to look older than it is, uh, naturally. It is a probably a 1970s era. Uh, I am only getting that dating from the fact that it says Taiwan on the back here. Right there, it says Taiwan, stamped in. The bottom is metal, not plastic, so that's black metal. It's just good quality all around. Hey, 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 hey you're going outside. Oh boy, there are there there are rabbits all over the place and the dog is going wild over them. So yeah. Huh. Alright, so this one here, very cool. I paid five dollars for it. Um, Barb actually picked this up first and she picked it up and she's like, she I guess she thought it was a little too light to be worth anything. It's not that light. Um, it's it's we're talking a glass globe, all metal pieces here. So I mean it's as heavy as I think it should be. But she put it back down and then I walked over maybe a couple minutes later and picked it up and asked $5 and they're like, okay. <laughs> so I immediately put it in my thing. Like I said, it's probably worth between 30 to $40. So uh, in the antique booth, it's not selling that online, but it's great. It's a gumball machine. It looks like it's in great shape on the inside too. So I'll put that down, get out of the way. The other thing that I almost didn't get is this here, Pyrex. And I sort of wrote it off, wrote it away. I, I, uh, there was another person that was behind me in line and she went in and walked straight to the Pyrex, like immediately picked it up. I was like, well, there it goes again. Um, <clears throat> we had a story a while ago about somebody getting the Pyrex. But you know, it's like, I can't, look, Pyrex is cool, but it's not like it's, it sells and it flies off the shelf. For me, it does not just fly off the shelf. And it's almost like everybody knows to buy it anyway, so why even bother? Uh, it's kind of like oversaturated, let's call it. But she um, she picked it up, and I think this is because it was the first thing she picked up, and there was no price on. She just set it back down. And so I picked it up, and I walked over to the late the, the ladies running it, and I said, three bowls, a dollar a piece? They're like, yep. <laughs> okay, so... What we have here is a butterfly gold. That's that's what that print is from the 70s. So uh, this one eh, may be worth three, four dollars. I'm not gonna get too excited about it. The Pyrex primary are more desirable. People like to collect the four bowl set. I have two of the bowls here and we have the older style in this case. This is the TM Reg Pyrex. So on the bottom of it, you can see that there, you actually can't see. It says, TM Reg 402 Pyrex, made in USA. So what makes this older as opposed to the newer ones? And older and newer is just from the late 40s or the 60s. That's older and that's newer. So we're talking maybe 20 years difference here. But the older style would say TM Reg on it, and that's how you know that it's older. Uh, but the, And plus the color is slightly different in the red. But uh, and we have a TM Reg green bowl too. This is a four bowl set. Usually, uh, we're missing here the yellow, the yellow bowl, which is the largest bowl, and we're missing the blue bowl, which is the smaller bowl. So Pyrex Primary, I will sell these individually. This green one probably about twelve dollars. The red one probably about ten, and the Butterfly Gold, uh, let's call it four. Okay, so I paid three dollars. Pretty good. And yeah. Um. All right. I also bought this. This is one of these little gal. I haven't thought about this in a while. I'm thinking Galileo. I don't. I don't know if that's right. A Galileo bubble. 
thermometer. So these bubbles will adjust themselves depending on the temperature of the room. And so currently it says 72 degrees. If it got warmer, the 72 would fall down and then you'd be left with the 76. If it got warmer still, you would have the 80 degree one up here at the top and that's the, the clear one. So that's what it is. And if obviously if it's colder, then we have a couple down here that would float up. And um, yeah, that's just a thermometer. I believe it's Galileo. I, of course, I'm gonna double check. Uh, this thing like this, they sell easily in the booth for about 10 bucks. And I paid a dollar for it. These three items here, I bought all together. Uh, there was a certain point whenever I was done buying like the larger things for a dollar, two dollars, and was just grabbing some little things. So I grabbed these, these are some mixing cups. Um, I mean, they're not great by any means. They're, in fact, this one is sort of, doesn't have a handle the same way. I don't know. That They're actually all mix, mix matched, to be honest. These, these two go together. Whatever. Um, I will try to sell, oh no, these go together. I'll sell these three together, like two or three dollars for those. Um, this one's sort of a lost cause. It's scratched up inside, sort of dented. I'll probably just hang on to this one and use it. Then I also bought this here. Very cool, red, white, and blue, vintage uh, yard, is that a yard stick? Yeah, vintage yard stick ruler situation. Very awesome. And then I bought this accordion style metal uh, ruler. Ooh. Usually these, they, they make these also in wood. This is really, I don't know. People like to craft with these things though. They'll take them apart and they'll spell out words and things with them, I think. This one's metal. I'm not used to seeing metal. I'm used to seeing the wood ones of these. But uh, I paid a dollar for all three things I just showed you. The cups and the two rulers. A dollar for all three. So I think that's a good price. Uh, this would probably sell in the booth for maybe between six and eight dollars, this metal one. This one here, it's a local town. So I think it says uh, Community Bank of Trenton, member FDIC. That phone number, it's a newer phone number, but it's still cool. I think that, um, oh, it's okay, it's a bicentennial. It says 1976 on it. All right, so it's America's Bicentennial, 1976. So uh, this I'll probably put for $8 or so. Yeah, so all together they add up. Almost done. I did get this really cool milk glass bottom. It's one of these vanity uh, mirrors. We have a magnifying mirror on this side and a regular mirror on this side. So pretty cool and I paid a dollar for this. Last thing I got, I paid a dollar for and it's chipped unfortunately, but the chip's in a pretty good spot for being a chip. Uh, it's just really cool. It's this pink, white, and blue. Got to wash it up like a couple of these things. This will go in the retro booth, the 1950s booth. The chip is right on the spout here. And it's on the outside of it. I wish it was on the inside, but it's right on the out the outside here. It's a little chipperoni. So, yeah. So this probably go in the booth for like eight to ten dollars. So, awesome, awesome stuff here. I was able to get quite a lot. Oh, I, I forgot the tree. Okay, and these things. So, right over here there is a is a uh, picture right in the front. It has the wave on it. The guy at this house uh, was a painter. Uh, like a novice, no, not a novice, but he, he liked to paint. So there was paintings and drawings, not eh, just paintings all over the house. There, these are like the better ones. And the only reason why I got this one is because Barb said, oh, I like that frame. So I picked it up off the wall and we looked at it and yeah, I like the frame too. It's solid wood. I think that'll go great in the booth. Somebody will probably spend about eight to $10 for that picture. I paid two dollars for the little one with the waves on it the one behind it i need to probably show you that whenever you have like a metal tool and you kind of scrape it on rather than brush it on so there's a lot of that um there is some minor cracking here throughout uh due to age we have like a circular mark here up at the top i'm not entirely uh very smart <laughs> on paintings and stuff like this so the age of something like this, I'm not sure. I would probably guess somewhere around the 60s and up, not anything older than that. 
but it's a really nice large picture and it's of a forest scene with the snow drifts and maybe a lake here. Um, just a really nice, I like the colors, the muted, the muted coloring of it. Let's see if I can get this in frame. Yeah, it's a really pretty picture and it's a large size. That's the front and here's the back. So um, we know it's an American frame because of the mitered corners. I know that much. And um, the coloring here is sort of this off-white beigey color. Uh, so that's why I'm thinking it's probably around the 60s, 70s time frame for this. Not really much earlier than that and not much later than that. But I am not that, uh, like I said, I'm not that knowledgeable in, in art like this. The frame is nothing to write home about. It's just sort of there. It's wood. But um, yeah. Oh, and the, the name on it, let's see. W, w. Butterfield. So I'll have to look that name up. Um, that's just kind of written right on there. It looks like in black magic marker. No, in uh, paint, black paint. I got a ceramic tree. This one is Big Lots, so not that great, but it is cool. It has the snow-capped uh, branches. Oh, you can't see that. It has the snow-capped branches on it, and uh, yeah, it's a Big Lots thing. I paid a dollar for it, but in the booth, I think this will still do really well because ceramic trees, regardless of the fact if they're old or not, are just really popular and they have been for a few years. So in the booth, I will probably put about 10 to $15 on this and I think it'll sell for that because it's still in great shape. Originally at Big Lots, this sold for $9.99. Uh, and I don't know really how old this is, probably, it's not anything older than about 20 years. But yeah, there it is, that's the haul video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.